PR for the company. I'm not, I get a paycheck every To hustle to bring a new business and that's really um that brings a lot of stress and so yeah. if you're not oh it's breaking up a little bit okay no it's good now okay <laughs> yeah okay um and so so i have people are like oh you own your own business you're an entrepreneur and i'm like well yeah kind of but also that was on accident <laughs> like <it> was <laughs> I, you know, I got laid off and I was like, oh, I need money. I guess I'll go ask somebody if I can do PR for them. Uh -huh. It's an intentional um, rejection of corporate America or an intentional rejection of the agency world. It was just by necessity. And so now I kind of float in between um, because it's, it would just be, like I said, very stressful to always be worried about that next sale or that next client. Yeah, perfect. So how has your practice changed over the years and like how have you adapted to like certain situations throughout either economic problems or anything? Yeah, I've, I've always been really grateful that I learned PR and I started in PR in the old days. Mm -hmm. We were super excited when we got email because we were like, oh, we're fancy now, we have email. We were yeah. using fax machines and we were mailing our press releases um, out to journalists and wow. so that, yeah so that's like <laughs> back in the olden days <laughs> yeah so having that very traditional um, introduction and that the level of expertise on the traditional side later you know it wasn't very long before it was like oh there's this new thing called the internet and mm -hmm. so I had to scramble and I already had a really solid computer graphics background so technology I had already learned all the up-to-date technology so I I've never been um, afraid of technology and a lot of my peers were hmm. so that I sort of had a leg up because I already had this years of computer background um, so it made it very easy for me to transition and so that was a big change in our industry mm -hmm. And then going from regular internet to social media has been a big change for our industry. And again, there are people who are like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna do this social media thing still, like 10 years later. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's for kids. And so I've been able to, again, kind of be ahead of my peers, some of my peers, because I've been able to embrace those changes and um, so I still rely on my traditional early experience and traditional um, education in the field, but I also jump on whatever's coming next and I'm not afraid to jump on whatever's coming next. Yeah. And my career, you know, the economy failed in what, like 2007, 2009. And, you know, so there's this big dot com um, bubble and the dot-com burst and everyone was like oh that's the end of everything and um, so I guess I've kind of learned it's like well yeah it's really bad and it can have really drastic negative um, impacts on the economy but it's never really the end like there's still there are still businesses there are still nonprofit agencies there are still um, government agencies that rely on communication. So even if one part of the economy totally falls apart, there's still other parts of the economy that are still functioning. They might not be um, at their highest levels, but they're still functioning. Yeah. And so I've always worked on the business side. I've always worked in technology and in professional services. And, um, and within PR, it's kind of divided. To, um, so you have B2B on one side, and um, so that would be tech and all the business um, entities. And then you have consumer on the other side. And so that would be um, consumer packaged goods or fashion or um, sports. Yeah. And, um, and while those have always been kind of more exciting, like I would have loved to work in sports marketing, um, the business side always seemed to me to have a little bit more stability. And so, um, you know, 
businesses can be very negatively impacted by the economy. But like if you focus on just one niche, like for example, fashion, mm -hmm. whole industry can be wiped out. Um, and so, so while I've um, had a variety of clients and a variety of experiences, I've always been within sort of the same categories. And so I've built my expertise in that and those have, it's served me well because those have been a little bit more reliable. And then I did go to the public affairs side. I, I've worked for two public agencies as their um, public information officer and spokesperson oh. during the times when the economy, you know, those were the places that were hiring. Um, did you like those jobs or? Yeah, I did actually. Um, yeah, that was my first, um, I worked for in for water resources in the state of California. And in California, water is, can be managed by a city or a county, but it's actually owned by the state and it reports up to the EPA. And it was after 9-11, so it was in the early, mid 2000s. So I did all of the like FEMA disaster training. Oh, I did wow. like terrorist, um, communications training, uh, which I've never had to use, but it was it was really um, interesting yeah. uh, background. And yeah, and so that was a time where the economy was really suffering, but working for a, basically a utility, um, a public entity, you know, they still needed a PR person. Definitely. So it makes sense to me to, to vary my career in that way. Mm -hmm. And then I guess I'll just ask a question about that in specific. So was there like a lot of like measuring like results like data and that kind of stuff in that certain type of job or has there been any job uh jobs or careers you've had in the past that have had like an exemplary i don't know like overload of like that kind of task or is it mostly kind of just reaching out yeah well so so data is something we talk about now that we talk about differently than we did before so there was always reporting we all you always have to prove to your client or to your boss that you're worth the money so yeah. there's always some kind of reporting on the agency side usually it's monthly reporting to clients and so just like a sales job you know did you sell enough did you make your you know monthly quota or whatever so i've always done reporting and that that doesn't scare me so now we talk about data and I, and I still like to separate it because there's reporting metrics, KPIs, and measurement. And that's always been part of PR. Okay. Uh, so even in the olden days when they did it before, there's somebody was always looking back and saying, well, we did X and our result was Y. That's built into it. So I've never felt challenged by that. And that's been something that I've had to do um, a little bit less in um, some in environments, but even when you have a regular full-time job, somebody's competing for your budget and somebody's competing for time and resources. So you still have to show that you're doing a good job. Um, they're not gonna dock your salary or fire you, but there's, there's progress or you want a promotion or a raise. So you're always reporting your results. Yeah. Um, or what often happens is people don't understand PR. So they're like, what do you do all day? It's like, here's a report of what I do. You know, those TV cameras didn't just show up by themselves. No. <laughs> they organized that. Um, and so, so now when we talk about data, companies are using data in a way to interact with consumers, to interact with constituents, and it's rolling into PR. And so one thing that I would suggest, um, I was never a math person. Yeah. And I always kind of, st I always stayed on the creative and on the writing side. And um, finally, I was forced, I, I mean, I took a math class, like one math class for my undergrad. Mm -hmm. and I took accounting or something, like I took something that like counted as math and it wasn't even like real math. But for my MBA, I had to take a statistics class and I really forced myself to get into it and to really understand it because it is important and now we're going to see this overlap where people say you know what's the data and they might mean two different things what are the measurements of of your results mm -hmm. what and what metrics are we using what kpis are we using that's one thing that you have to do in your day-to-day -day job but the other thing 
that you have to understand to inform your decisions, to inform what your goals and your outreach and your planning is going to look like, is to amass and aggregate and understand all of that data. So I think that's being woven into programs probably now, where it wasn't when I was in school. And again, uh, I got my MBA like five years ago, and there was a big focus on statistics and then like financial accounting and the money side of it. So I would say anybody going into PR now will probably be responsible for reporting their measurements and their metrics, but also understanding the data that is relevant to that organization and using it to inform their communications. And so I hope that people, my wish would be is that people are being prepared for that now. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so I have one more question since we're kind yeah. of getting into time, but lastly, just pretty much what overall advice that you haven't given me already, would you give me or a student such as myself one to jump into, I guess, just the communications field in general? Like, is it rewarding? Obviously, all jobs are challenging, but in your sense, do you like find it to be worth it, I guess? Yeah, well, I always say that it's, thank God PR is a job, because otherwise I'd be unemployed, because I yeah. can't imagine doing anything else. It's like, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm going to go to nursing school, or oh, I'm going to become a physical therapist, and I just, I'm like, no, I'm just a PR person, that's what I do. If that doesn't exist anymore, I'm out of luck. What I would say is, um, it's, it is a job, everybody needs a job, whatever job they choose, but it's also a, a state of being in a way to really jump in and understand the media and what's happening with media and um, the media landscape and, and really understanding from a high level, global, political, economic, um, vantage point all the way down to the micro whatever your agency or, or business is focused on mm -hmm. really broadly understanding business and economics and um, that would be the thing that I would say is challenging and interesting but that also can make a, a really big difference in success and so not approaching the career as you know oh I'm just gonna do this stuff because this is what re I'm required to do but really pulling in some of the, that business expertise, um, yeah, I would encourage everybody to do that. Perfect. Yeah. I think actually, I've been really interested in microeconomics recently. Yeah. So I think that's gonna be one of my next steps. <laughs> yeah, I think it can only help. And the challenge is, and um, if I can share, do you have a couple minutes for me to share a couple things? Yeah, yeah, we got like one or two minutes, yeah. Yeah, so the challenge is, is in the business environment, you have a large corporation, there's a thousand employees, um, 100 managers, and 10 VPs. Mm -hmm. President of marketing could have come up through their entire marketing career to that role and not have any PR experience. And so as a PR practitioner, regardless of what your level is in the organization, you are often called upon to be the leader of that practice, even though that's not your job. Yeah. You have a boss, you're not the decider, but you still have to be the person who has the most information. And you'll see this a lot in PR and the professional discussions. Public relations is always fighting for a seat at the table. It's like, you know, the, the little ugly child in the back of the room that everybody's ignoring because the accountant and the sales managers and um, the product designers are somehow more important. And so PR is always pushing within the organization for um, that level of expertise. And I've seen it and I've experienced it, but as an individual, you have to embody that. And so I would challenge new practitioners to not only do their jobs well, but become the experts in their field because they will have to translate and communicate their expertise throughout their organization. Absolutely. Well, thank you for all of that valuable information. I'm sure I'll have to rewatch that a few times to even. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love talking about it. I'm so glad that you reached out and I'm so excited for you. Please let me know how you're progressing and how yeah. things are going and, um, and always ask me if you have questions. Well, thank you so much, Julia. And I will absolutely keep in touch.
Okay, awesome, Luke. Take care. Have a great day. Your family too. Thanks. Bye bye. bye, -bye.